Hi, I'm Dr. Michael Brisman. I'm a neurosurgeon. I'll be speaking to you today about one of my specialties, stereotactic radiosurgery. Stereotactic radiosurgery has revolutionized brain and spine surgery for certain conditions. The key features of stereotactic radiosurgery, which is a super focused type of radiation treatment, are one, it is very conformal to the target, and two, the radiation has very rapid fall off from the target. So the target gets a certain amount of radiation and then the nearby tissues within a few millimeters get hardly any. Stereotactic radiosurgery is done in either one session or most commonly three or five sessions. Those are the most common possibilities. And when it's done in two to five sessions, we often refer to it as hypofractionated radiosurgery. Features of stereotactic radiosurgery are that the radiation is done to a small area, it's a relatively high dose, and it's usually done in one to five sessions. This is in contrast to conventional external beam radiation therapy, where usually the area that we're treating is a relatively larger area. We're usually using low doses, and it's done over many sessions, let's say 10 to 30 sessions. Stereotactic radiosurgery works differently through a different mechanism than external beam radiation therapy. Standard radiation therapy is usually covering a wide area, is usually covering a lot of normal tissue as well, and works because the cells that are in division, such as tumor or cancer cells, are more susceptible to the radiation than the normal tissues. As such, this is usually used primarily for malignant or cancerous tumors. On the other hand, stereotactic radiosurgery uh, that gives a very high dose to a certain target can be used to obliterate or uh, alter any type of uh, cell. So the, this can be used for not just malignant uh, tumors, but also benign tumors, other benign processes, and e even normal uh, brain tissue in certain cases. As such, stereotactic radiosurgery is for very focal problems. Stereotactic radiosurgery was created in the 1950s by a Swedish neurosurgeon named Lars Lexell, and he invented a machine called the Gamma Knife. The Gamma Knife is one of the major machines that's used to deliver stereotactic radiosurgery, and it uses a cobalt source that delivers gamma rays. The other major source of uh, equipment for using for treatment of stereotactic radiosurgery are called linear accelerators, or LINAX. These are the same type of machines that are used for standard external beam radiation therapy, but they have special uh, adaptations and equipment that allow them to deliver super-focused dosing. The Linux that are usually used for stereotactic radiosurgery most commonly include a machine such as the CyberKnife and the Novalis TX. The Gamma Knife and the uh, Linux that are used for stereotactic radiosurgery use a uh, technique of uh, convergence of beams to achieve their uh, objective. That is to say there are many many beams that are aimed at the target within the head or the spine and they come from different angles and as such the abnormal uh, tissue gets a high dose of radiation but the surrounding uh, normal tissues in the brain and spine get very little radiation. There is another type of radiosurgery that's rarely used uh, through machines called cyclotrons uh, or proton beam machines these tend to not deliver much different or better results than the other machines. They're also much uh, more expensive and less commonly available, but they work through a somewhat different uh, mechanism. The radiation particles that are emitted from these machines uh, emit their uh, majority of their um, energy at a known distance from the radiation machine through a, uh, a phenomena called the Bragg Peak, and by setting the target at a known distance from the machine, uh, we can, again, achieve the same goal, but this is rarely used. The indications for stereotactic radiosurgery include several major categories. One category is tumor, uh, and, and this can include tumors of the brain, such as metastases, gliomas, uh, meningiomas, acoustic neuromas, and pituitary adenomas. It also would include spinal tumors, such as metastases, schwannomas, and meningiomas, tumors of the spine or spinal cord. The second category of disease that can be treated include vascular malformations. These include arterial venous malformations or cavernous malformations of the brain or spine and spinal cord. And finally, a category of functional 
disorders. These are disorders where often we can improve function by altering a normal um, part of the brain. And these disorders include most commonly trigeminal neuralgia, but also glossopharyngeal neuralgia, tremor, and temporal lobe epilepsy, and less commonly uh, intractable pain conditions, obsessive compulsive disorder, and other forms of epilepsy. Serotactic radiosurgery can also be used outside of the brain or spine, um, and those are, those are treatments that I would not be involved in. I'm primarily involved in the brain and spine indications. To compare the gamma knife to the LINAC machines, and I use, again, both the uh, gamma knife and LINAX with CyberKnife and Novalis TX, but just to compare, the gamma knife usually uses a head frame, is a single session treatment for the brain. Treatments are based off MRI, angiogram capacity is available, and I like using it for things like trigeminal neuralgia, uh, AVMs or arterial venous malformations, acoustic neuromas, and also for multiple brain metastases. The CyberKnife or Novalis TX use uh, linear accelerators. They usually will use a mask for the face or head or a body cast for spinal indications. The treatments are usually based on a CAT scan with fusion uh, to MRI through special software. Usually the treatments uh, are hypofractionated, that is to say they're done in three to five, three or five sessions, but can be done in one session. And I particularly like this technique for larger tumors or tumors by the optic nerves like pituitary tumors. There are also a lot of uh, indications that would be um, just as good with either technique. Uh, Serotactic radiosurgery is done as an outpatient, um, and whether or not it's being done as cure or palliative depends on the nature of the disease. If we're treating something malignant, it's often uh, more of a palliative treatment, and we're just treating that spot, whereas if it's a benign disorder, it could be curative. Side effects of stereotactic radiosurgery are low, but not zero. Can include seizure for brain treatments. Uh, that's, again, going to be like 1% or less. Can include swelling or edema uh, of normal brain or spine tissues um, that could be treated if they develop with brief courses of steroids or hyperbaric oxygen treatment. Can include problems like weakness, numbness, or other neurological deficits. These are usually going to be transient and will depend on the region of the uh, brain or spinal cord that's treated, as well as the type of abnormality treated, the dose, and other factors. Serodactic radiosurgery can usually be repeated in, in, in many cases, particularly if a large amount of time has passed between treatments. Usually one of the features for serodactic radiosurgery is that we need to know the diagnosis or be pretty sure about it. Serodactic radiosurgery would not be a good choice for problems other than the ones I've mentioned. It would not be good if, if you needed to know the diagnosis and did not have it, in which case you would want to do, at least do a biopsy. It would not be good if you needed quick decompression or quick results of symptoms because stereotactic radiosurgery usually takes some time to work, usually in the order of a month, months, or more. It's also not so good for things that are very large or very large target areas or for targets that are poorly defined or diffuse processes. Serodactic radiosurgery is an excellent option for many spine and brain diseases, though, especially for brain and spine tumors, vascular malformations, and functional disorders like trigeminal neuralgia. Its features are low risk and high efficacy. Stereotactic radiosurgery allows us to avoid high risk and more major procedures in many of these cases. Thank you.